Hey everyone, welcome back and let's write some more neat code today. So today let's solve the problem, lemonade change. Uh, this is a pretty good one, honestly, for an easy problem. Believe it or not, I got the wrong answer because I actually misinterpreted the question. So let's take a second to actually read and understand what they're telling us. The idea is that we're running some kind of lemonade stand or some kind of business. And the only bills that we're going to be accepting are, let me actually draw it this way, either we will accept a $5 bill, a $10 bill, or a $20 bill. But lemonade, like the product that we're selling, always costs five. So if somebody gives us a $5 bill, we owe them zero change. If somebody gives us a $10 bill, we owe them $5 of change. If somebody gives us a $20 bill, we owe them $15 of change. Now, we start out with a money supply of zero. And we're given an input array of the transactions that we're going to have. So we have to process them in this order. So we're given a one person with $5. So that would be, you know, this decision. We're also given another person with five, another, and then 10, and then 20. So going through this sequence, the only question we're trying to determine is if it's possible for us to process all these transactions by giving every customer the correct amount of change. So initially, to be honest, this is what I thought the problem was. We start out with zero. So of course, if the first person gives us a $5 bill, we owe them zero anyway, and then our money supply will increase to five. So I thought it was just as simple as making sure we have enough money. So whatever change we owe the customer, just check that our money supply is greater than or equal to the change. I sort of misinterpreted the question. But what they're really saying here is these are the bills that were given. So think about it this way. Imagine we had two customers that gave us five. So then in total, we'd have $10. But keep in mind that that $10 consists of two $5 bills. So then imagine we get somebody who gives us a $10 bill. We owe them $5 of change, so we lose five, and then we add that $10 bill. So our total money supply is 15. Then let's suppose another person buys with a $10 bill. Well, we give them five, so now we're down to 10, plus that $10 bill, so now we have $20. Now imagine a third person comes with a $10 bill. You might think, well, we have enough money to give them $5 back, but that's actually not the case. This $20 consists of two $10 bills. We actually don't have the precise amount of change that we owe this customer. So that's kind of what the problem is. So hopefully now you at least understand the problem. We need to actually keep track of the bill. So we're not going to have a single variable for money. We're going to have some variable for like how many $5 bills we have, how many $10 bills we have. And I guess you could also keep track of the $20 bills. But consider this. When somebody gives us a $5 bill, we owe them zero change. When somebody gives us a $10 bill, we need to check that we have greater than or equal to at least one $5 bill. When somebody gives us a $20 bill, sure, we could increment the number of $20 bills we have. It doesn't really matter because we're never going to decrement the number of $20 bills. None of these customers is ever going to need $20 of change. So really, it doesn't make sense for us to keep track of that. You could, you might try coding up that solution, but you'll quickly realize that that variable is never read. So there's no need to actually keep track of that variable. But now, this case is pretty simple. If we owe $5, there's only one way to give them $5. This one is definitely more interesting. If somebody pays with a $20 bill and we owe them $15, how could we give it to them? Well, one case would be that the number of fives is greater than or equal to three, because three times five is 15. But there is one more way. Think of it for a second. We only need one five and one 10 to give somebody 15. Okay, so now things got complicated, didn't they? We can easily increment the number of fives and tens as like we process uh, these two transaction types. But now when we owe somebody 15, are we going to do five, five, five in change or are we going to do five, 10? Well, at first, you might think that now this is backtracking. You might think, well, maybe we can optimize it with some dynamic programming. But let's not jump the gun. Let's understand this for just 30, 60 seconds, something like that. We have a choice. We can either give the customer change with fives or we can give the customer change with the five plus 10. Which would you prefer? Think about it for a second. 
Would we rather have extra fives? Like the only difference between these, by the way, is one of these we save two $5 bills. With the other, we save a $10 bill. Which do you think is more important, having two fives or a single 10? Probably two fives because you can add them together and get 10 anyway. But you can't take a $10 bill and split it into two fives. So I would much rather have the two fives because in case we owe like this customer change, well, fives can possibly get us there. If we owe this customer a five, this can get us there. But if we only had the 10, we might be able to like pay this person, but we can't pay this person. And honestly, with just a single 10 and zero fives, we wouldn't be able to pay either of these two people. Fives are required to give both of these people change. So therefore, anytime there's a choice to return 15 and change to somebody, we're always going to try to give them a 10. We don't want to have 10s. We want to have fives. So now let me just kind of simulate a one of these examples. I think the first one is simple. You can probably do that on your own. I'll do the second one. So these are the bills down here. Let's do uh, the first one, five. So initially our fives and tens are zero. Somebody gives us a five. We don't owe them any change. Now we have one five. Again, somebody gives us a five, no change. That's two. Somebody gives us a 10. So we increment the number of tens. We have one of them, but we owe them five and change. There's only one way to give that to them. Do we have enough fives? Yep. So we decrement this by one. Now we have a 10. Once again, increment the number of tens to two, give them change. We have zero fives. Fine. Finally, we're down to 20. And so now we could like increment the number of 20s, but that's not necessary. But we owe this person 15 in change. Well, we can first check, do we have at least one 10 and a five? Well, we don't have any fives. Okay. Then we would check, do we have at least three fives? We don't. So there's no way to give this person change. Therefore, at this point, we don't have to continue traversing through their array. We can immediately return false. This is, by the way, a greedy solution. We identified the pattern. We identified that we'd rather save fives than save tens. So we can take that sort of shortcut and be greedy with this solution. Thus, we can solve it with just a single linear scan and keeping track of two variables. That's going to be linear time and constant space. Let's code this up. So as I mentioned, we're going to keep track of the fives and tens. So initially, I'm going to have two variables for that. And then we're just going to go through the bills. I'm just going to say for B in the array bills. If B is equal to five, then let's increment the number of fives. If B is equal to 10, then let's increment the number of tens. Again, we could do the same thing for 20, but that's not ever going to be read. That variable is never going to be read, so we don't need to. This is like an option way like you could code it several different ways I want to try to keep this readable since this is an easy problem and I imagine a lot of beginners will be watching this video I'm going to create a variable called change how much change do we owe the customer well we only accept five dollars regardless of the bill that they give us so we're gonna take their bill and subtract five from it so this is the change that we owe them there's only two cases either we owe them a change of five or we owe them a change of of 15. I mean, the other case is that we owe them a change of zero, but in that case, we don't really have to do anything. So these are the only two cases that we worry about. If we owe them a change of five, we want to check something. Is the count of five greater than zero? If it is, then just go ahead and decrement the number of fives. We are successfully able to give this person their change. But otherwise, we don't have enough fives. We need to give them five, but we don't have any. So we can immediately return false at this point. There's no need to continue going through the array. Now, the other case, of course, is 15. This is going to be slightly more complicated. So remember, there's two cases. Either we give them a five and a 10, or we give them three fives. We want to try to give them a five and a 10. So you could write it this way in Python. If you want to be more explicit, uh, you could say that this is greater than zero and this is greater than zero. If that's the case, we decrement both of them. We can do that in one line, just like this, five minus one, 10 minus one. That's what we prioritize, but it might not be the case. So else if we have not this, the only other way we could give them change is if we have three fives. So I'm gonna say five is greater than or equal to three. If that's the case, we obviously just decrement five by three. We use three of those bills. Now, 
If neither of those is true, then we just can't give them the change. Thus, we return false once again here. There is a way you could eliminate both of these return falses by having either a flag or, you know, maybe even using the change variable. We could set that to zero here and here. But anyways, that's a minor kind of change, minor improvement, minor change. Get that. Finishing this up. If we never return false and we make it through the entire bills array out here, we can return true because we were able to give them their change. So this is the entire solution. Let's make sure that it works. As you can see on the left, it does. And it's about as efficient as you can get in terms of time and space for this problem. You're probably not going to be able to solve the problem without going through the entire input. I don't think that's theoretically possible. If you found this helpful, check out neatcode.io to solve a bunch more greedy problems. Thanks for watching and I'll see you soon.